What's going on? This is Yancey, author and producer of the This Is Why series. Make sure you go now and subscribe to my website, www.newfacemanagement.org. This is why you go to college. This is why you go to college. Hey, yo, this is why you go to college. New Face Entertainment. Always paid my bills. This is why you go to college. New Face Entertainment. New Face. New Face. <laughs> this is why you go to college. This is why you go to college. This is why you go to college. I'm Chris Cardwell, um, aka Good News. Um, we're in Rochester, New York right now. I was a psychology major at Hampton University. Got my bachelor's in psychology from Hampton, but shout out to Ohio. That's where I'm originally from. Cool. All right, well, we're back. We're in Rochester, New York. This is my man right here. This is, this is Why Documentary on an historical reflection of college life outside the classroom. So, as we've been doing uh, time and time again, we want everybody to give their perspective and let people know, you know, their take on uh, HBCUs, their take on college life. So uh, go ahead, let them know uh, what made you decide to go to HBCU, what made you decide to go to Hampton. Yeah. All right, so for my Hampton experience, man, it all started in high school days. So um, me, shout out my cousin Eric, my cousin Jamil, uh, they went to Hampton with me. Um, our junior year, or it was like our 10th, our, yeah, our junior year, we went to um, our aunt took some high school day, we went around to all the different schools, but Hampton just, when I went to Hampton, they just showed so much love, it just felt like I was supposed to be here. Right. And um, it was like any, nothing I've ever experienced before. The people were nice, the girls were beautiful, you know what I'm saying? It just was, and I just felt like I was. that's where I was supposed to be. So um, I applied there. I ended up uh, having to go to the Summer Bridge program. So pre-college, uh, shout out to all the pre-college kids. And um, from there, man, going to pre-college, PCO2, I was hooked. I, like Hampton was like, I was like, yo, this is it right here. <laughs> like, yeah. like, it's off the chain. And then, um, yeah, man, I just it just was an awesome experience. All right, so what was it like, um, basically going from you know, far away from home to, to Hampton? How, how was that like your freshman year? Um, like my mom's from uh, Rochester, my dad's from Ohio, so I always was used to traveling mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But um, my first time going to school and being on my own, it's like going, being in college is like you're almost grown up, but you're not grown up yet because your parents have taken care of a lot of your bills, but you they're not around you and stuff like that. So um, it was it was fun, man. But just had to make sure that you stay focused on your work because, especially going to a school like Hampton, it's easy to get unfocused sometimes because there's so many women around, so many temptations. Um, but the thing about Hampton is, it's like everybody, or they try to, the people that I surrounded myself around, they were on their, their stuff. Right. So you know what I'm saying? So that's very important, with the people you surround yourself around because that energy pushed me to become a better student. Because like I said, I came in having to go through the separate bridge program, but then I graduated with honors when I graduated from Hampton. Right. So yeah, man, just, I think that's a really big part of it, just the people you surround yourself with, surround yourself, because Surround yourself with, I believe, and that's the type of energy you attract when you become. So I just was blessed to be around the right people, man. No talk. Okay. All right. So um, let's talk about some of the people you were around. I guess when you were freshman year, and just tell us your story um, from what you remember. You know, all right, it was so, so yeah, long yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's a, we old now, so. Yeah. But um, freshman year, man, one of the um, memories I remember most is uh, meeting one of my best friends, Brandon Taylor. Shout out BT, and uh, we was in a student center. And, uh, you know, the hilltop was real big at the time, you know what I'm saying? We both had on our fresh white ups. So, you know what I'm saying? Hilltop, I think I stepped on his shoes a couple times. We had a couple words. But um, from there, after that day, we just became really good friends. Mm -hmm. And that was like him, Brandon, Gavin, um, Draymond, Stephen Hendricks. Like, uh, shout out my boy Brett Blair, because then we ended up becoming a uh, part of the little freshman talent show. Mm -hmm. And that's how we ended up because start dancing and we all started to uh, vibe. So I remember that first talent show, it was uh, Steve, uh, Steve Hendricks, Brent Blair, Dre Bond, and um, they came out with their little Detroit, Detroit stuff, yeah, Detroit yeah, stuff, yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And then me, Brandon, I think it was me, Brandon, and I think Gavin might have came out and we came out doing the hill toe mm -hmm. and doing the reggae dancing and stuff. So uh, from that day on, it was just dope friendships from there, man. And um, yeah, it was just, B was like one of my day ones, and then we had, uh, of course, 
Yeah. <laughs> we met you like right there, like the same around that same time. Cause Gab, like I said, Gab is one of my one of my really good friends too. Gab is your little brother, and, and then we came became your little brother. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? You definitely was my one of my day one big brothers and shit. Throughout. I mean, I didn't even cuss, but um, throughout the whole. My whole handy career, you know, about Big Brother. So right. I still call you right. my Big Brother, man, because you had the influence that you had on me in that day, man. So, yeah, man. All right, cool. So um, let's go, let's, let's fast forward a little bit. Right. So your freshman year, I guess, would say is a little more unique compared to others um, because we clicked so early, so right. quickly, right. and there's so many of y'all. So let's just talk about, like, what it was like being a freshman and having an opportunity to be off campus and do things off campus, promoting parties, like right off the gate. Like, it was, it was, it was just fun, man. It was fun, it was a different experience. I mean, meeting you and then we started, uh, you started a new face and you brought all of us to be a part of it to help promote parties and stuff like that. It was amazing, man, because being at home, I really wasn't a big partier like that. We went to some parties here and there, but like being able to see the back end of it, the motions of it, how it works, see how to make money with it, it was a business. And that's basically what you were helping teach us, is the business behind it and the science behind it. And um, it was a plus for us, we got to go to a lot of the parties for free and get paid and stuff like that. So, man, and also being able to come your career, wash clothes off campus, being over to chill, and just get away from campus. We had the, uh, the curfew, but being able to get your career, be able to spend the night so we don't get in trouble, sign out. Sign out. So, uh, it was amazing, man. I definitely appreciate you yeah. on looking out for us because, like, you didn't know us from a uh, can of paint, but you brought us in and treated us like your own little brothers and stuff like that. So that was really dope, man. I really appreciate you for that. Cool, cool. All right, so uh, trying to let's, let's talk about we got, we got so many different yes. aspects, you know. I want to try to do everything, you know, in the correct order. Um, obviously, we're gonna be editing this shit, right? I just want to say that I'm trying to get to to. I want to get to like. You know, you being you going into dance and performing. So the whole thing with the Oracle is everybody who's a part of Oracle Majestic, they, they said their own piece about it. Oh, okay. So okay. I, want, I want you to touch on that, and then go from there to, um, okay. I guess the Greek thing. We talk about you know the, the party. So like we can kind of just touch on these things. So I guess you know right now let's talk about. Um, I, I just ask a question. Just go from there. So um, what was it like? Uh, you know, basically being a male dancer on campus because. You know, at the time that we were all apart, 2002 to 2003 area, you know, um, the, the females pretty much were the ones that were, that, that right. were dancing. And then you guys came and brought a new style to Hampton University. So let's talk about that. So Yo, so big shout out to my OB, Cliz from James Hall. Um, when I met Cliz, Cliz was one of the most amazing dancers to me that I had ever seen in terms of being able to pop and lock and glide and stuff like that. And um, Cliz was a big part of helping me become a better dancer and showing me how to, to uh, you know what I'm saying, do different moves and stuff like that. So, um, so when I got into when I got into dancing, then shout out to my boy Rob Rich. Um, when I met Rob, Rob, him, Chuck, Quinetta, uh, shout out Quinetta. She's one of Beyonce's dancers now. I mean, all these people that I'm talking about, with Fresh, um, they teach all over the world and stuff like that. I mean, I'm a professional photographer now, but the people that I was associated with back then during dance, they're all doing amazingly big things with right. dance now. So it was like just to see how amazing and talented some of those, you know what I'm saying, all our friends were mm -hmm. back in the day is just, it's just really crazy. One thing I always tell like, it's like we were ahead of our time. You know yeah, what I'm like, definitely, man. The things that we were doing. If they would have had Instagram and Snapchat back mm -hmm. then, we all would have had a million followers, yeah. man, I swear. Yeah. And then, um, like I said, shout out my boy Rob Rich. He ended up starting the Oracle. And then with the Oracle, he just brought a different swag to campus. We were doing the fashion shows and stuff like that. And then um, we ended up, our group ended up going to uh, BET Spring Bling one year. We performed on BET Spring Bling stage. Um, we were like one of the finalists or something like that. So that was an amazing time. Booker, shout out Booker. Booker was there. And then um, Tyrell. It was just, it was super dope. Man. Right. And then. We had our little dance battles too. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? We had the uh, you started the you got served joints right. and that's like when you got served first came out. And I never forget, like, the you guys like Hampton was just different when it came to the dance, like like it was like really like on some you got served type <laughs> thing. Like if you watch the movie, you'd be like, oh they don't do but yeah, that's how we was dancing mm -hmm. back then. And um yo, it just used to be crazy. 
crazy. I remember coming out, walking out before we did our intro for the first we got served, and the whole student center being packed all the way to the top and to the track. And we just like, yo, and then he'll show it on the footage. You just, it's crazy. And we had a little uh, dance beat with uh, Booker's team. It was like, it was like we had the Cali team, and they kind of call it kind of us like the New York, New Jersey team, because most of the people are from New York, New Jersey area on our team. And um, that's when the, uh, I think the Motopole 10 fashion show was about to come out. I think we had named our team, our team like Motopole 10 mm -hmm. after the fashion show, right, right. We represent the fashion show. So the whole time, like we're practicing the stuff for the show. One of our boys, Tyrell, that was a big part of our group, he kept asking him to dance with us because we know what his talent, how talented he was and how he was when he came to pop and stuff. So the whole time, he faked it. It's like, nah, I can't do it. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. Come show time. <laughs> we all we all getting hype, getting ready, we looking over because how the Cali team money kind of like we're dressed like the clowns and stuff like the Cali clowns. Like that's when Crump and stuff is real big. Right. And um we see Tyrell over here, so we like, oh like oh you try to try to try to get it. So that was like it brought a really big rivalry to that first we got served competition, but it was all love at the end of the day. It was, like, it was a fun rivalry, you know what I'm saying? It was it wasn't nothing bad, it was all fun. But um that's just, just the, the memories we have from that. It's just like, I felt like I really lived in a real life movie. Like, Hampton was a movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, they could really make a movie off of all four of our years. They could make a movie off all your years. Yeah. Just from coming in as a freshman and pledging to different little organizations, you know what I'm saying? Niggas join, I mean, uh, people join and stuff like that. So I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. But, um, but yeah, man, it was like, the Hampton experience is like, it's like you have to be there to really appreciate it, you know what I'm right. saying? So like something like New Face uh, and being on campus, you know, during, during New Face, the New Face era, uh, what, what, as a dancer, something from a dancing aspect, um, given that platform, having New Face to, to, to provide music, giving that platform for people to, for, for you guys to, to perform and dance, what, what was that like? And, you know, looking back at it now, um, how, how do you think that would be for, for, a, for a campus? I mean, First off, New Face had the business aspect of it. So it was like, you know what I'm saying, bringing us in to perform different places and then also having the shows for us to even showcase our talent. You know what I'm saying? Because before New Face, the only thing we might have had was maybe the freshman step show. You know what I'm saying? We didn't have a whole bunch of things like that to really showcase like the You Got Served competitions and the fashion shows and then, you know what I'm saying, at every party, you know what I'm saying, we battling and stuff like that. I mean, dance was a really big part that time, I mean, I don't see kids really battling and stuff as much now, you know what I'm saying, how we did it, but um, New Face kicked all that off, you know what I'm saying, and um, I don't know where my hippie career would have been if New Face wasn't a part of it, you know what I'm saying, it might have been a lot more boring, <laughs> right? if anything, more, more. Yeah. yeah, but the core of New Face was strong, man, mm -hmm. and um, it kept it going through till today. Now, for the past seven years, I went to the city of Rochester, I know head photography for the mayor of Rochester. I do all type of work, work around Rochester, so um, I'm blessed, man. I'm really, really blessed. Nice, nice. Good job, man. Proud of you. You talk well, man. You know what I'm saying? Always make sure you're good. Where's the fact? Alright, so um, talk about New Face as a business and, and what you might have, what, what you've learned and kind of applied without even knowing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's, let's talk about that and like how, how that may have helped you um, throughout your career. So when it came to New Faces, period, this was my first basic encounter with party promotions and club promotions and, you know what I'm saying, marketing and, and things like that. So when I was working with New Face, that's one of the things I learned is to be able to hustle, talk to people. Because when you're passing out flyers, you got to be talking to people. Like, you can't just give them a flyer and walk away because most of the time, they might throw it on the ground or something like that. So just being able to interact with people, get people a flyer, talk to them about what's going on and just working on your people skills. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, just the business aspect, you know what I'm saying? Yancey putting us on, helping, it was helping us make bread for promoting, you know what I'm saying? Giving us money for going to pass out flyers at different schools, all the Norfolk, you know what I'm saying? Making runs and stuff like that. So I, was, I had a little, <laughs> back in the day, I had a little Volkswagen, so we used to be all over. And, um, it just was the hustle, you know what I'm saying? So coming into my own business, now I'm out passing out flyers for my own business, doing different stuff for marketing and stuff that we might that we learned back then for 
for new face now I'm just applying it just to my everyday life because it's just you don't have to reinvent the wheel when it comes to success. You just do what you learn, you just apply it to other things. So um, that was a big part of it. How would you compare, like, if you just touched on it right now, like how it is now, 2018, how it was back then? Things are, some things are the same, some things are different. So oh, when it comes to like the social media marketing and things like that, like what, how, how do you compare that? Yeah, that social media, that's like one of the biggest differences, you know what I'm saying? Now it's like you throw an Instagram post or a Snapchat or something like that. We just literally have to just get Facebook. So right. <laughs> Facebook wasn't even crazy like that back then. So it's like, you couldn't just put up a Facebook event and invite all your friends. It's like, you had to get out there and talk to people. You had to get, it's like, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't, you had to kill me lazy with it. You had to go out there and be out there. You had to, you know what I'm saying, hand in hand. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that was a big difference because it was more about a hustle, less about, you know what I'm saying? Now you can get on your phone, message 100 people real fast. You know what I'm saying? Even back then, early Hampton, Hampton days, text messaging on your phone was just starting to become a thing. Like, right. it, it really was, was, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It really wasn't like how it is now. So. It just was totally different, you know. But I honestly, I feel like, in a sense, it was almost a little bit better too because now at events, you got everybody like this in their phone. You know what right. I'm saying? Back then, you didn't have the option to be in your phone like that. So now, you pay, you paying attention to what's going on. You know what I'm saying? You gotta make, you gotta make it fun. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And that's another thing New Face taught us is just how to make it fun out of. You know what I'm saying? Nothing. Because right. a lot of times at Hampton, we didn't we might not have had a party going or nothing like that. But now all of a sudden we tell the girls on campus, yo, you about to be a Yancey crib after just come through, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Now we're making our own fun. Yeah. So it's just like just being creative with it, you know what I'm saying? That's I think, yeah, that's that's a big part of it because it's like with social media, you don't have to be as creative with how you get things out there, you know right. what I'm saying? How you promo is just, just put it out there and it's out there. Back then, you had to be creative with how we're gonna reach these people, how we're gonna get these people to this party. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's a very big difference on how promotion is done now and back then. You know what I'm saying? It's like back then, if you look at it, it's almost like the Stone Ages now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But how they do stuff now, and then, so it's kind of crazy. It makes you old, feel old. When you think <laughs> about it, like just looking at you, like looking at the interviews that you got back then. Like I'm so happy that you that you just were through thinking and you said you and Joe were thinking to take that footage because mm -hmm. even you can even see the difference in the footage of how that camera footage now and then how the footage you can do on the iPhone and stuff like that. Right. That just shows how the times have changed. You right. know what I'm saying? So so yeah man, it's crazy man. Alright. So um so we talk about turning nothing into something. Right. So that that's let's talk about the twelve to two. <laughs> <laughs> because the twelve to two, I mean everybody knows the twelve to two is like Niggas gonna miss class from 12 to 2. So mm -hmm. it's the club during the daytime. And 12 to 2 was a big part of New Face 2 because you had all the New Face DJs DJing from 12 to 2. Mm -hmm. right. You know what I'm saying? Shout out Tay James, shout out Phil, Baby Drew, even Anwar. I just, I think he was DJing back then too a little bit. If you wasn't in 12 to 2, more than likely wasn't pop. He wasn't pop the first day. Mm -hmm. But I remember just in the Greek life, the strolling, the dancing it's like you might leave 12 to 2 and be sweating you got to go to mm -hmm. class because you're dancing and strolling so hard you know what i'm saying and yo it's just it's like one of those things where if, you, if you're not there to experience it you can't even appreciate how dope it is you know what i'm saying it's like one of those things where like when i um when i came back you know what i'm saying and i brought my boys from ohio and they see what the 12 to 2 was it was like yo i've never experienced nothing mm -hmm. like this like i don't know any other schools that do a 12 to 2 honestly mm -hmm. that do something like that mm -hmm. so man and you know what i think with other schools they may do it on special occasions like even norfolk state being so close to us i only noticed with norfolk state if it was like a friday big event that's going on that even like they'll play music if it's a probate or they'll play music if there's a football yeah. game. Well, we're we playing it like it's a regular day. Like some days we had it every day. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like with somebody's week. Yeah. Like say it was the Alpha week or the Cap week or the Q week or student leader week or something mm -hmm. like that. They might have 12 to 2 every day. Every day. You know what I'm saying? Yep. <laughs> every day with a theme. Boy, <laughs> you look 40 people will schedule their classes around like, all right, gotta get my morning class, no class at 12 to 2, and <laughs> yep. my, my late classes. Cause that's how popping it was, you know what I'm saying? You didn't want to listen to it, so yeah. that that was dope. Man, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Do you remember like the new face dinners like that? New face dinners? Yeah. 
the, that we had. Um, I remember. I remember the couple of new face dinners. Did we do one in um, the banquet? Did we do a, a dinner? Yeah, we had a couple of banquets. But I'm talking like more like the intimate ones, like with just the street team, like um, when we used to live over the bridge. You remember, like you know, yes, yo, yeah. yo. So I mean, that was one of the things that you were instrumental in doing, though. and I think that was smart on your part is keeping the team tight. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because like doing stuff like the dinners, you letting us come over your crib and just trip, chill, bring shorties over there. And doing a little stuff for us is like, it was like a bonus. It's like we got the new face stuff that we do on a big level, but then, you know what I'm saying? It's like we got our VIP access too, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we're like the ground floor of the face. So, yeah, those was dope, man. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, like I said, a lot of those core people are my good friends to this day, you know what I'm saying? And if we didn't have those things and we were, and that made it so close, that we might not be friends like how we are to this day. All right. Um, earlier, we had spoke about, um, I guess, like your favorite, your favorite events, and like you were kind of reminiscing a little bit. Like, do you, do you, do you think of like one of your favorite Legion parties or one of your favorite um, um, party brawl Legion yeah. was one of the craziest. Just, I just remember just having like a thousand beads around my neck, <laughs> just <laughs> handing them out to shorties, and yeah. just, just seeing the reaction. And I mean, just the college life was just so dope. You know what I'm saying? But any Legion party was. Amazing, you know what I'm saying? We, not only because we're promoting it, we're you don't have to wait in line, we fresh it, you know what I'm saying? It's like I remember times where we see the line, we, we might pull up, the line might be long as heck outside, but we walking right up to the door, you know what I'm saying? Right. And getting in, and that just was like that part of that that VIP experience being a part of New Face and and just feeling like yeah, I'm, I'm that dude, you know what right. I'm saying? It, it was it was a dope feeling. And, um, I think the the Toba parties and the the parties that y'all y'all started off in the mansions and stuff mm -hmm. like that, like all of that stuff springboarded from what Newface was doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So D describe to the describe to the people what what the Legion was like, so they can understand that it wasn't like a club. Like explain to them like what that like, it was like. First off, in the Legion, you might have a thousand. You're gonna have a thousand plus people. And it was more like almost like a mini concert in there, like because you had the stage. Wale was there one time when before Wale was big. I remember performing, doing mad tracks, and it was like a mini concert. I remember like we'd have. I remember you could stand in the, in the crowd <laughs> of the Legion. It looked like a sea of people, and then you look on top of the stage. And I, mean, I can remember just seeing that guy, that, that one light being on the stage, <laughs> and just seeing when you could just see a little bit what's going on, but then every else is kind of like dark and mysterious. And you got things like people just dancing at every corner, and it was just, it definitely wasn't just a club experience, it was just a vibe that you couldn't get nowhere else, you know what I'm saying? And um, when I heard it wasn't doing the Legions no more, like, I'm like, yo, they don't know what they just not on, because that was like, that was life back then. We look forward to the Legion or Norba. Yeah. I forgot about the Norbas. Norba used to be crazy too. But yeah, man, we used, used to get it crazy, man. Did we do some Norvas too? The thing, the reason why kids don't have the day is because they don't have a Yancey on campus or somebody that's willing to put themselves out there to start a business and be a trendsetter and make it happen. You know what I'm saying? Because you were the head of everything. So you, like, we were just following your lead and everything. Right. And um, that's what campuses need. And that's part of why a lot of campuses don't have stuff like that because they don't have the mentor ability or they don't have the mentors or the people that want to put in the energy to help out. I, I think that's what we're trying to let people know in this documentary that we were all kids, you know, like yeah. we, we weren't, like I wasn't, and like we're one year apart, you know, so <laughs> he was, a, he was right. a freshman, I was a sophomore at the time that he came into Hampton, so we were all doing these things together, teaching each other, mentoring each other at a very young age, you know, we're talking 18, 19 years old, respectively, so um, anybody can do it, you know, it's not, it, like, it's, it's not that something that we just, had a talent like the glow. We didn't have the glow, right? We just just like, no, we, we, had, the glow. we, had, we had, had the glow. We had the glow. Like, <laughs> we just wanted to throw parties and have a good time and it turned into what it was, you know? So, um, I mean, that, that's cool. So, all right, so moving forward, when um, there were a number of different things that you did. Um, so, let's talk about what it was like just, you know, the, the, the Delta Gen pageants and oh, doing stuff like that and being able to perform. So, and, yeah, the, the Delta Gen pageant, man, that was like, that was definitely one of my highlights of my Hampton career. During the Delta Gen pageant, it was like so many things that went on behind the scenes. And explain to them what it is too. So yeah, right, so 
with the Delta Jet pageant, basically it's a pageant that the Deltas used to do every year. And um, they used to get basically the most popping guys on campus and they did a pageant, like a pageant. It wasn't, I hate to say it, it wasn't no, no gay stuff or nothing like that. It was just, you know what I'm saying? But we had an intro scene, a talent scene, a bedroom scene, and a question and answer. And during my Delta Gen year, it was sad. We had Brandon Taylor, we had Mark Jackson, shout out my boy Mark Jackson, super producer. Um, we had Riot Great House, we had The Boys, shout out my boy The Boys. I mean, our, our pageant I felt was stacked with a lot of talent and a lot of amazing people. And um, yeah, I came off my talent, I danced to God today. Um, Who won, by the way? I oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering to, because yeah. you're talking about it. You gotta let them know who the winner was. I'm trying to be humble about it because it was so many amazing performers. But um, that night, I ended up taking it away. It was really close between me, and Mark Jackson, and the right. boys. Mm -hmm. um, we pushed each other hard during that contest, man. Mark, he did the Old Hampton in the uh, the T Pain style. That was off the chain. And the right. boys, I'll never forget. The boys did a very strong poem, um, a narrative. That drum was crazy. And it was just really, it was just literally, I think the only thing that set me apart was my question and answer. I didn't stutter on my question and answer, so that kind of <laughs> put me up there. But um, besides that, we were all neck and neck with the pageant. And um, it, was, it was amazing, man, amazing experience. We were all pre-pledging at the time. I, I was, I was pre-pledging Kappa, the boys, and um, Mark was pre-pledging Q. And uh, I think Ryder, Ryder was right. pre-pledging Alpha mm -hmm. at the time. And, um, it's just kind of like funny to see, because we like all know, we can't talk about it. We all looking at each other, yeah, each other yeah. that look like, yeah, after practice, you know, we got to go. <laughs> so, um, I, I remember even getting a text from my dean in the middle of the uh, pageant, like, yo, don't go to that party after, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know when winning, I think if you go celebrate it, so, but, um. It is but, what it is. Yeah, it's man, yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I, was, I was happy to not, to not go. <laughs> So, um, and, uh, oh yeah, my Delta Jet pageant, yeah, I had to, uh, all, everybody else wear red as my subliminal, I can finally say that, <laughs> yeah. I had the subliminals in it, but um, it was dope, man, that Delta Jet pageant was, was fire, man, and um, everybody, like I said, everybody knew was talented. Cool. Alright, so um, since we touched on it right now, let's talk about Greek life and um, your decision to become Greek and uh, become a brother on top of so let's talk about that. Um, Greek, man. So, first off, my brother's a Sigma. So, coming into Hampton, that's really, I, I knew about the Sigmas, that's really what I knew about Greek, like Greeks coming into Hampton. Your older brother's a Sigma? Yeah, my oldest brother. Okay, all right. So, um, Ace Club solo, like spring 96. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Our, and where he went? I'm from Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee. Okay. So, um, so, that's what I knew. But when I came to Hampton, Hampton was busy with all the different types of mm -hmm. Greek presences. Right. And um, when I seen the noobs, it just was like, I was like, yo, I was amazed. Like, yo, I saw and Kings. To me, personally, you know what I'm saying? The noobs had the dopest style on campus. It's just seemed like that organization described me on who I am the best out of right. all the organizations. Because like, when you come in here, it's like, you gotta do your research, you gotta, cause a lot, some people do it for the wrong reasons, you know what I'm saying? But with me and Kay, I just was like, like, like that's it, you know what I'm saying? Because if it was just doing, just wanted to be Greek, I just would have been sick, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But um, and shout out my boy Joe, my boy Joe, he's one of the, the illest sickness I know. So and um, and then, then my boy, my big bro Aaron James Hall, Sigma, one of the illest sickness I know. So um, but yeah, when I met, you know what I'm saying? Like my big bro Julian, when I seen smoke twirling and cane and. You know what I'm saying? Some of my big bros in this all shout out all spring uh, 2002 nukes because they made me want to become a nuke. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm, I'm, I don't even I'm like a lost words because I could imagine not being a nuke to this day. And my journey was a little bit different um, because a hot line ended up going. It took it took us a couple years to to get it done. Um, but I stuck with it. I never switched over, and um, I'm glad I did. It, you know what I'm saying? And, um, but shout out all the other Greeks because like my boy B. Taylor, he was better than my best friends from Hampton, he's a Q. I remember being front row center for his probate. 
you know what I'm saying, and support him. We were supposed to, both supposed to be spring 04 together, but unfortunately my, my line got dropped that year. But um, yeah, man, just, I couldn't imagine not, not being here, you know what I'm saying? And I think every kid should at least take, it's a little bit different now, now that we're getting older and things change, but um, Divine Nine is definitely, I think that's something that's important to a college campus, you know what I'm saying, Show, showcasing. Um, the Greeks and because it's more it's more than just being Greeks it's about really showing what the Greek life is all about and giving back and and um, helping the people that are you know what I'm saying younger come up because that's another thing about being Greek is they become your big brothers too not just as a, a, a sense of pleasure but like you need to wash clothes or you need to ride to Walmart you know what I'm saying right so yeah man it's really I think it's important for campuses to have that we talk about the legacy. And then you know how your your oldest brother's a sigma, you're a kappa, and then your younger yeah, brother a, is, is is a kappa. Yeah, so let so know how you know just how that trends. So yeah, with, with my with my older brother being a sigma, and um, when I ended up crossing, he was like, "Damn, when I brought all this sigma stuff, man!" I thought, <laughs> like, man, I'm sorry, I just you know I ended up not telling him to the last minute, but um, come to find out, one of the things he always tells me is, "Yeah, if I want to play sigma, if the kappas wasn't, if the kappas were all on our campus, more than likely he felt like he probably would became." Okay, but um, now fast forward in 2016, because, or let's say fast forward before 2016, back in 2006, 2007, I brought my little brother, and he would have to be maybe 12, 11, 12, 11, 12. Biological little brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. my biological little brother, yeah, my, my real blood little brother brought him to Hampton, he stayed with me for about a week, and um, he got to see what Greek life was about what going to college was about. And I think that's so important for uh, older siblings to do that too. Like we have a younger sibling, man, bring them on campus, show them what it's all about. Let them stay with you for a couple of days because you never will understand the impact that it has on them until they get older and you right. see how, how their path is and how their journey takes back. Because if I didn't bring my little brother Anthony to Hampton, maybe he never would have went to Hampton. Maybe he never would have been a cap. I mean, cause, but him having that influence on him, and because I didn't have that influence, you know what I'm saying? Right. Maybe if my brother, at the time, I would have been able to do that with him. Maybe I would have been a single because mm -hmm. I had that influence on him, but it wasn't ingrained in me, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. That. So, my little brother, it was ingrained in him, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I made, I made sure that with, with Anthony, even though I didn't say, you're going to be a new, you know what I'm saying? Just more about him just seeing what it's all about, being around it, showing the positives, you know what I'm saying, from, from being Greek and stuff like that. And um, him choosing his own path, he decided that's what he wanted to do. Um, and yeah, man, I'm extremely proud of him. Being, me being 06, him being spring 2016, me being a 16, him being an 8, we both being, being a part of Comeback Minds. It's almost like I relived my Hampton process and my Hampton career through my brother, you know what I'm saying? So um, I'm very humble and um, appreciative that he looks up to me in those ways, you know what I'm saying? Because now he's doing big things, uh, graduating with his master's, working at Prudential, I'm making a good amount of money, you know what I'm saying? Fresh out of college, I'm so proud of him. So, yeah, man, this is definitely one thing. That's what's up, man, that's good. All right, so let's, uh, let's talk about a little bit about your career. Uh, let's talk about what happened after you graduated from Hampton and, um, you know, your business, everything you got going on here. All right. All right, so like, after I graduated from Hampton, or when I was graduating from Hampton, you know, it was kind of like, like a bittersweet story. Like, I called my dad, yo, dad. I have a job, I don't know what I'm gonna do. So he hits me with the, um, well, come home and um, work for a family business. And at the time, um, our business had a family, um, our, our family had a business called uh, Stem Cell Authority Limited, which dealt with the storage of bank of uh, poor blood stem cells. And um, my dad had, had been in the business almost eight years before I became a member um, of his uh, organization. So um, when I graduated from college, I ended up working for him for, uh, from 2007 to 2009. I became vice president of patient programs um, for the company. I worked with patients, um, talking to them and training them on what uh, stem cell collection was about and uh, why they should do it, the reasons for it and stuff. Um, but make a long story short, the company, um, with, with businesses and, and things like that, we're talking about millions and millions of dollars. Um, Business can be treacherous, mm -hmm. and um, unfortunately, um, after my dad took the company public, a lot of people tried to take the company from my father, and um, the company ended up going down. And when the company went down, um, 
my paycheck went down. <laughs> so um, I ended up, uh, like I said, ended up actually losing everything trying to help my dad keep the company afloat. Um, my car got repossessed in front of all my friends, in front of the loops, in front of the, my uh, frat house. I couldn't, I lost my apartment. I had to go back home to live with my dad. And then um, one day, July 2009, I called my mom like, yo, I just need to get out of here for a little while. I can't take anymore. I just need to maybe get away for a couple of days. And I had just started photography as a hobby, just doing it here and there. Shout out Front Park Entertainment in, um, in Ohio, Corey, and um, my special area, because we started a company Front Work, or my, my big bro Corey started a company Front Work. They're also members, they're also cabinets, shout out Noobs. And, um, we had models for the company, but that's how I ended up becoming a photographer because the models we had for the company, we ended up having to part ways with the photographer we were using because he wasn't practicing good business practices. And I ended up doing it to fill a void because we didn't have anybody, we didn't have money to pay a photographer, but I ended up falling in love with, with the crack. So um, during the time when I, was, when I lost everything and I was doing photography as a hobby, when I came to Rochester um, for my four day trip, which was which was supposed to be, I brought four outfits with me and my camera. And um, it turned out to be a blessing in disguise because I ended up being in Rochester to this day. Um, I used everything I learned from being in business with my dad and things he's taught me to start my own photography business. And um, I just I just really just dug deep and, and um, involved myself in the craft of photography, learned lighting, really learned how to use my camera and manual mode. And, Everything that goes along with it, um, composition, and everything I can learn about photography, and um, God just blessed me and put me in the right positions to uh, basically the law of attraction. You no, know, you don't know about the secret. Make sure y'all go watch the secrets. Free, free on Netflix. It talks about positivity and the law of attraction, and that's the whole reason why I got the name Good News. Because I'm always talking about positive things, but that's literally um, how I was able to build my business just through being positive, working hard, and then attracting the right things to me to make my career happen. So, um, I've been... In so, last two questions, two more questions. One for one for high school students and one for college students. So, um, like I said, it's documentary is for, um, to inspire and to get them motivated to do certain things and feel like they can do this at any moment. They can do whatever they want to do. They can become a photographer, they can run a business. Yes. So, um, what message would you have for a high school student that's thinking about going to college, thinking about doing something better with themselves? If they're sitting right here and they're like, yo, listen, Chris, like, what, you know, what, what should I do about college? You know, like, what, like, what advice would you want to give that, give that person? Well, first I would say to anybody that's going to college is you don't want to miss out on that experience. Because I feel like as me getting older, college is more than just books and grades. It's like when you're in college, you learn who you are. You learn, you learn how to, I'm gonna, how to, I don't wanna say it like this, but you learn how to finesse in certain situations. You learn how to talk to people. Like even having it, like some of you, like with your teachers and stuff like that. Just building, building relationships, the importance of having relationships, the importance of having a, a network. Um, it's so important, and these are the things that you learn in college. Um, of course, when you go to college, you want to make sure you associate yourself with the right people. Um, because the people that you associate yourself with, and I said this before, the energy you surround yourself around is the energy you become. So if you surround yourself around people that don't want to get work done, they're just worrying about partying, more than likely that's probably the path you're going to be on. But if you get with people that's more balanced, they party, get their work done, and that's really what Blueface was about. You know what I'm saying? Getting work done, but having your, uh, your, your grades tight as well. I, I, for some reason, I even remember you even talking to us about making sure we had our grades No, that was like, that was only like, a requirement. Making sure we was like studying and stuff like mm -hmm. that, because I remember that being a part of Blueface. Because yeah. it wasn't just about partying, you know what I'm saying? This was about having that complete college experience, you know what I'm saying? And um, to anybody that's out there thinking about going to college, thinking about um, applying to college, do it. It will be the best decision you ever make in your life because you'll have some of your long-lasting friends that you'll meet throughout, throughout the rest of your life in college and the experiences um, and situations that you'll be put in while you're in college will help you set up uh, your life for later on. And um, I honestly, I don't know where I would have been today if I, if I didn't go to Hampton. Like, a lot of the 
the poems and stuff I use from pledging and things like that that I apply to my life when things get hard and um, some of the connections I have now when I'm able just to pick up the phone and call people all around the world because going to college you're going to meet people from Texas, California, Florida, London, wherever because people come from all over, you know what I'm saying, to go to these schools. So, and like I said, that's helping you build your network, so that's super important. So, to any high school student, go. Do not, not go. <laughs> Do it. Cool. And then, um, for a college student, like a college freshman, sophomore that's thinking about dropping out, I'm not sure if you've been in a situation or you know somebody who may have been in that situation where they're thinking about dropping out, they don't want to, you know, deal with college anymore. What message do you have for them to, you know, seek it through, see it through or whatever? Um, one thing I know is, I mean, some people might feel like college isn't for them, college isn't for everybody, but um, just completing the task, being able to say I have a college degree, it's a certain pride that comes with that. And, and um, when anybody that's expect or thinking about dropping out or anything like that, like I look back on, I, 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 me being 35, about to be 36 next year, and looking back on that time, it's like, it's really a microcosm of life. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not, you're only there for, you know what I'm saying? When you're there, it seems like it's forever, but it's only a couple years of your life, you know what I'm saying? That you have to dedicate and, and um, stay motivated. So it's better just to finish out them years because being able to say that you finished that and accomplished that will set you up for future accomplishments. You know what I'm saying? And um, I think it's important to make sure you stay and finish what you start. This is your boy Good News, aka Chris Carwell, signing off. Hampton University, this is why you go to college. New Face Entertainment, let's go.